In this video, we're going to look at composition of functions. One way to take two functions and put them together to get a new function. So here's the definition, and in order to understand composition of functions, you have to think about function notation and the substitution process that we have for evaluating functions. So I say at the beginning here, remember that the parentheses notation, f of input, whatever the input is, means that you plug that input into the equation for x. So like if I write f parentheses 2, that means to do f of 2, plug 2 in for x. Well, we can do that for entire functions, and when we do, it's called composition of functions. So if you're given two functions, f and g, the composition function, and order matters here. We can do f composed with g, or g composed with f. And the symbol we use to shorthand it a little bit is the little circle symbol. So, so this is f. We would read this as f of g, or f composed with g of x. Literally, what it means is f of g of x if we put it in nested parentheses notation. The little circle allows me to not have to write the extra set of parentheses there. And sometimes I like to add extra parentheses around the f of g just to emphasize that's the single name of the function. Sometimes we leave that off, but, but it's this function that we've named f of g and it's literally f of g of x, which means to take the formula for g and substitute that into the formula of f. So let's look at an example of this. So in order to do compositions, you have to have two functions. So in this example, we have f of x is x plus 3, and g of x is the square root of x. And in part a, we're going to do it in each direction because the order matters. This is not what we would call a commutative operation. In general, f of g and g of f are going to be different functions. We're also going to look at their domains, which kind of emphasizes that they are different functions. And then once you find a composition of a function, you can do the things you do with a function. You could draw a graph, or here in part B, we're going to evaluate it at a particular value. So suppose we wanted to find f of g. Well, we're going to take f of x, and we're going to plug g's formula into it if we do f of g of x, which we could write either of these two ways here. We can use the circle notation, f composed with g, f circle g of x. But what that means in function notation is f of g of x, which is going to be f of the square root of x, since g of x is the square root of x. So I take f's formula, and remember, whatever's in the parentheses, you remove the variable and you substitute that in. So I'm going to take f's formula, x plus 3, remove the x, and plug in the square root of x. Okay. And I just add, always add when I teach this the extra parentheses there for emphasis but we get the square root of x plus 3 on the outside. And in terms of the domain, since the plus 3 is on the outside, that would affect the range of the graph, but it won't affect the domain. The, the values inside the square root have to be 0 or positive, so the domain is x greater than or equal to 0 or 0 to infinity, including 0. 0 is in the domain. If we plug that into f of g here, <coughs> we would get the square root of 0 plus 3, which is 3. 0 plus 3. If we reverse the order, we're going to get a slightly different result. If we do g of f, that means to take g's formula and plug f into it. Okay? So we're going to do g of x plus 3. We're going to take g's formula, which is the square root. Again, for emphasis, I've added some parentheses. We remove x, and we plug in the x plus 3. So we're taking the square root of x, taking x out, and plugging in f's formula, which is x plus 3. So we wind up with square root of x plus 3. But this time, the x plus 3 is all together on the inside, which does give it a different domain. You can't take a square root of a negative number, so for the domain, you would need x plus 3 to be greater than or equal to 0, since all of that's under the square root. Or if we subtract 3, we see that x would have to be greater than or equal to negative 3, or from negative 3 inclusively to infinity. And then lastly, f of g, we now have a formula for it. It's the square root of x plus 3, so we can plug numbers in. So f of g of 16 would be the square root of 16 plus 3, or 4 plus 3, which is 7. Okay, here I want to point out sometimes the domain of a composition function can be a little subtle what happens. Um, technically, you're going through two functions. If you do f composed with g, 
typically we wind up with a formula that we can plug x in and it'll output this f of g of x just as I did on the previous slide with the f of g of 16. So we plug 16 in, we computed our formula and got our value. But you're really going through, conceptually, you're going through both functions, so you have to be careful if you cancel. You can't be in the domain of the composition if x is not in the domain of the original function, the first function that you evaluate. So, so the domain of the composition are all of the values that are in the domain of g in the first place, and then the results of that are in the domain of f. Okay. So let me just show you an example where that can, can get you sometimes if you're not careful. So if f of x is the square root of x and g of x is x squared, which these are basically the inverse operations of each other, then g of f of x, so I would take g's formula, x squared, and put f's formula, square root of x, into it, and I wind up with square root of x squared. Well, as long as you're in the domain, square root of x squared is x. So g of f of x is just equal to x. But the domain's not all real numbers. If I just looked at that result that g of f of x was x, I might think the domain's all real numbers. But it's really the square root of x squared, which has been simplified. So the domain is positive numbers and zero. x has to be greater than or equal to zero. You can actually see this on a calculator. Let me bring in an emulator. So here I have a, a Texas Instruments calculator and I'm going to hit the y equals button and actually plot before we simplified the square root of x squared and just well I'll hit zoom 6 which will make sure I'm in the standard window and what you see it's kind of interesting you see the line y equals x the the straight line that cuts through at 45 degree angles here in, in quadrant 1 but there's nothing on the negative side if I were to plot y equals x, I would get this entire line from negative infinity to infinity, but the square root of x squared looks just like y equal x, but only for x greater than or equal to zero. So you have to be careful sometimes if you do simplification. When you look at the domain, I usually start with the end result, but then go back and look at the original function and make sure I don't have to further restrict it, which here you would. You can't plug negative numbers into the square root before you square them and, and come up with real values. Okay, let's look at another example just of the composition process itself. So here's almost like my last example, but square root of x and x squared minus 3. Added on the minus 3 here to g of x. So let's look at these three different compositions. So f of g. So again, that one means we're going to do f of g of x. In function notation, we're going to plug g of x into f. So we're going to do f of x minus 3, since that's g's formula. So we take f's formula, which is the square root, we remove the variable, and we substitute in x squared minus 3. And that's our result, the square root of x squared minus 3. Okay, if we look to part b, we're going to do g of f in the other order. So we're going to do g of square root of x, since f is square root of x. So we start with g's formula, x squared minus 3, and we remove the variable, plug in f's formula and you get x squared minus 3 if you simplify the square root of x squared but again like my previous example, example I'll point out the domain of that would be x greater than or equal to 0 because square root of x squared is x for x greater than or equal to 0 it's an imaginary number otherwise you're not in the domain and then one more example to show you you just need two functions to do composition it can even be the same function I could do f of f or here I'm going to do g of g so we take g's formula and we plug in g's formula. We're going to do g of x squared minus 3. So we start with g's formula, x squared minus 3, remove the variable, and we plug in g's formula, x squared minus 3. That we could simplify. We can FOIL it out. x squared minus 3 squared is x squared minus 3 times x squared minus 3. If you FOIL that out, you're going to get x to the fourth. In the middle, you get minus 3x squared, minus 3x squared will be minus 6x squared, and then plus 9, and then the minus the 3 that was out there from g's original formula. And then we can just combine the constants and get x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 6. Okay? So there are some examples of composition of functions and how we can do it symbolically when we have the formulas.